Look at that thing. That's what we're making in this video. We're building a hot tub enclosure. We'll take you through the groundwork. Grading. We'll do a little plumbing to connect the water line. We mill up the wood. We'll build the platform. We'll knock out some walls. Okay. Seal it up. Install it. And close it back in. Wow. And bing, bang, boom, our hot tub's ready to go. My name is Dennis Raymond. I'm the builder at Clearing Farm, a working farm and private residence, 90 minutes northwest of New York City. We have a few short-term rentals on the property. We've been building all sorts of stuff like this out of our backyard. This hot tub enclosure that we're building is for the guests at the farmhouse. Our goal with this video is to give you a sense of how to build one of these yourself. Hopefully seeing me and my assistant, Captain Drew, building this thing over four days will help you out. All right, man, here we go. All right, step one. You gotta get all your groundwork done first. That's three quarter inch pipe. That's an inch and a half poly pipe. And now the fun begins. Keep your line straight. There you go. take these blocks out you stick them in the same spot they came out Now we'll see that we're putting loose rock in there that's uh, three quarter gravel. And what that does is that it gives the water some place to go. When it does get wet down there, the water at least can drain down there and freeze down there instead of freezing the soil around the pipe, which it's gonna do anyway, but something's better than nothing. And there's somebody down at the bottom of the hill. We got all the dirt on top of the plastic. That way we don't have just big piles of dirt in the yard. And 
this really comes in handy when you go put all this stuff back because you don't want to have messes all over your yard. You want it to look like it never even happened. Sometimes the best tools you have are your hands. There you go, look at that. All right, now we're down in the basement. And we are tapping into the main line. This is called sweating the pipe. And what you want to do is you want to throw heat at the bottom as heat rises. And then when you put that solder to it, if you have that pipe hot enough, the solder will suck up into the joint and that's what makes it watertight. And after that, we put in a new valve so we can shut it completely off if we need to. Your flower bed location. All right, looks like we have a decent amount of pressure coming out of our pipe. Now we're going to prepare the site. What that will do is compact down and create a hard surface for our tub to sit on. Um, you could use three quarter gravel, you can use anything that's going to shed water. This is what we had available and that's what we're going to use. And if it creates a hard pan right there, the water will run off of it versus leach into it. Uh, you'll see we're going back and forth with the tractor, and that's compacting the soil. You can see the softness of it. But the more you go back and forth, the more it'll pack down in there. Nobody's going to have to plane all of these boards and route them, especially if they're buying them. The reason why we're doing all of this is because we own a sawmill and we made all of these boards right on the property. But we really got to make them real pretty in order to make them look like they're store-bought. Um, that hand planer and the trim router really comes in handy. You keep making passes until it feels nice and smooth. One. We got those other two that have to be run through too. We gotta do one of them. Okay. Well, one of them's not bad then. Same thing happens with this when you're playing in this. You just keep running your board through and then going down just a little bit more, taking a little bit off at a time until it's perfect. Sometimes it takes five passes, sometimes it takes one. It depends on how funky the board is. Just a great shot of a camera on a board. Look at that. Good work, Drew. Now we're going to take some black plastic and we are going to put it down because we do not want the water to collect anywhere. We don't want it to suck into the ground. We don't want it to freeze and lift up. This plastic is going to help shed it down. Now what we did was we put pressure treat boards down that I had laying around and then we got six by sixes that sit on top of those pressure tree of boards and we hit those with tops and water sealer. Again, we're just trying to get everything not to rot. Use 
use pressure treated lumber, but right now lumber is so expensive. The sprayer really makes everything go 10 times faster. One coat of the water sealer should be sufficient. Alright, we put a piece of copper, three quarter inch copper on there just to give it like a rustic look. We're putting all the six by sixes together with ledger lock 10 inch bolts. All right. All right. So what this is called is mortising holes. I mortise down this exact size of the post that I'm going to be using for the privacy fence. Not everyone has access to one of these machines. We do, and it rules. Now we're on to putting the deck on. Now we're going to run this chalk line right on top of the 6x6. Six six. Good. Yep. Inch and a half, inch and a half, and three. One straight line all the way across. Now, when I lay my combination square on there, I take note of where I put the screws. You want uniform all the way. Oh. Alright, so now we're going to lay out all the boards on the top of the 6x6s and we are going to stain and timber oil we're going to put on there. You got to do the back side and the front side because you want both sides done so that when the wood dries, because it did come off of the sawmill, it dries a bit more uniform and we really don't want it to dry too much or too fast because that's when things start to crack. Now here you go. See, now we've got the posts that fit in there and that's a German fit because we call that good and tight. You can see that we're pounding those in there. You do not want everything loose. You want it as tight as you possibly can. So using the man hammer on the wood though is like using wood on wood, you're not gonna damage anything, yeah, right? Yeah, wood on wood. And you don't wanna hit it 50,000 times. You don't wanna be like tap, 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 tap. You wanna give it one good whack. Throw it in there and then you don't mark it up hardly at all because you hit it once. Whammo, whammo, bing, bang, boomo. Whoops. We drilled right into the rock and I used little tap cons to go in there. You don't want to overdo those because they will strip out. Damn. Here's one thing I don't like doing. Never have. Drilling holes. 
All right, the first course is the most important course, so you gotta make sure that thing is level and straight. All right. You. No, not you. That's what's be you. Uh -huh. I also had to put in a filler mm. block to get to that, but it's also a strong back. Cut out around some rocks instead of cutting the rocks. It's easier to cut the wood than the rocks. All right. Let's put in another tap con. Oh, what'd you do with my knife? Hey, you want to do a trooper run when you get a minute? Yeah. All right, now we are level and plumb. Level is horizontal, plumb is vertical. I have my combination square where I'm making sure I have the proper screw pattern so it doesn't look sloppy at the end. Now the other key that you want to use here is the spacer blocks. When you put the spacer blocks in, it also gives it a spot to rest on while you're screwing it in. It also ensures that it's a uniform spacing all the way through. So you don't want to use different blocks. You want to use the same three or four blocks that you're working with and they'll all be the same. And you make those blocks as big as you want the spacing. Once it gets to this point, now it's uh, it's just repetition. You're making the same cuts, you're spacing the same way, you're putting the screws in, all in the same pattern. You can't plant the peony bushes right now, Christopher. When I was in Dumont, we didn't plant the peonies till later. That's when we screw everything up and then you make fun of us for screwing everything up. So I know that it's a dirty trick to get me to fall for some kind of ridiculousness. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Final countdown. Okay. Oh, jeez. Don't try and line everything up. Leave it a little bit long. Mark your line and then cut it all at one shot. Ah, ah, sure. Um, hmm, what do I want to do here? All right, we're hitting her with our Super Wagner sprayer. This is getting hit with the Cabot Timber Oil Natural on Red Oak. You want to get it all. Get it in the cracks, crevices, everywhere you can. You don't want any bare wood. You want to get it where the oil can penetrate in and make like its own little armor on the outside. Sometimes you cannot get some of these cuts without using a chisel. And when you use the chisel, it's a little bit more precise tool than anybody actually thinks. Okay. How old is that chisel? I don't know, probably 100 years. All right. So this looks like the super time lapse thing. That's kind of a recap of everything we did real fast. If only these jobs just went this fast. It's a three-day job condensed down to 30 minutes, so think about that. The job's not done. We left the one wall off because how else would we get the tub in there? But having a tractor really makes short work of things, but you can rent a tractor for a day.
do not have a tractor, make sure that the guy delivers the tub closest to where you want it so you do not have to move it that much. Now, since I'm going to try and slide this right off of the forks, we have these kicker boards down. I'm going to try and put the pallet on top of those boards and slide the tub right into place. The tub itself is not terribly, terribly heavy. You can weasel that thing around wherever you need it to go. Pushed it right off of the pallet. The pallet may not have made it. But it has done its job, so now we are in place. Can you please tag it? Hashtag big move. Editor note, big moves with an S. Pretty impressed with the unit itself, it's nice. Now we can finish okay. the rest of the privacy wall. Here we go. Last one. Well, we're right back to doing our repetition, our blocks, our boards. Well, finish off with our sealer, oil, timber oil. This thing might be on its last leg. Again, you want to get all of it. All right. So the packaging on this is pretty good. Like, I didn't mind how this came packaged. It wasn't damaged. There was a couple of spots where it got knocked a little bit, but it wasn't terrible. assembly was pretty quick. The hardest part was taking the plastic off. Everything else just went right in as it should. Ready? Yep. I did enjoy that they gave you these two little silly wrenches for the bolts. I'd recommend using an actual wrench for that. I want this caption to say, Tight is tight, too tight is broke. Tight is tight, too tight is broke. Yeah, those are quarter inch bolts, so you don't want to put too much stank to them. You will snap them. <laughs> like mowing the lawn 47 times. 
that was pretty funny. It's very important that when you are building a hot tub platform and milling all of the wood and sealing it and installing the hot tub that the lawn does get mowed. You always want to have the ribs facing up. These always go up. Oh, this is going to be a tight one. That's not fair. And the collar to go over top of it so that the smoke or the creosote from the wood and everything can't gather oh, I forgot a piece. on that lip. It's the ash bucket, right? Not as painless as one would say. So it you actually, simply unwrap it, which takes no time at all. No time at all. This was an incredibly long, grueling process to get these off, but here we are. And now it's ready to go on top of the pipe. Oh, where's my hattie thing? So four hours later, we got the muffler part of the pipe cleaned off of the plastic. Dennis polishing up his pipe. I'm married 20 years, bro. I'm all about pipe polish. Now make sure you wipe it all off. That was another thing. Wipe that off. There it is. In you go. Look at that. Because when you do fire it up, if you have your fingerprints on that pipe and it does get hot, they will be there forever. Seems to be like a hot tub install. The drain, you just put the valve on there and then run your tube to wherever your drain want to be and you're ready to get in a hot tub and go for it. $1.88 bag of mulch will make everything look nice and pretty and like it's been there for a long time. And there you have it. Hot tub enclosure from our sawmill, ready for somebody to enjoy. So the next super duper project, three days and 30 minutes. This is Dennis Raymond, signing off. Now we gotta do this 